Welcome back, everyone, to the show of Requirements, a Harry Potter podcast streaming everywhere you can get podcasts and also on YouTube and the Harry Potter Fanatics YouTube channel. My name is David. I'm back after after a couple episodes of being absent due to this is like the busiest part of my life. And so depending on how we're releasing these, yeah, you've been absent for at least the last two Goblet of Fire episodes. Last two, last two Goblet of Fire episodes. And so um, I'm joined by my co host Spencer Price, who has been, man, he's, what are you wearing on your head again? Oh, a tea cozy Mm -hmm. for the occasion. (laughs) Very. But you have to, (laughs) it's a very specific reference to this part of the book only. Yeah. Um, but it, it's referenced more than once. So I was like, I know is I was like, I know Isabel has one of these. <laughs> it's like, babe, do you know where the <laughs> Do you know where the tea cozy is? Well, I, see, I didn't want to say the words tea cozy. Mostly because oh, it's say? not an American thing. I was right. just like, it's like a coaster, but it's oh, fabric. Gosh. Okay. I've got one of those to open up the jars. Except it's not fabric, so it's kind of like a plasticky rubber it's material. Not, yeah, this is a mm, yeah. I got this one is, of those. This too. is a macrame chicozy. So ooh, very yeah. Isabel's good at making stuff. Nice, so. but yeah. it kind of looks like a wig because it has all the yeah. But Spencer Spencer's been holding down the fort before his baby comes, and it's it's, it's coming real <laughs> well, soon. It's gonna be me and Abby for one of them, but uh, yep, baby came. So baby came. Yeah, <laughs> uh, let that be a lesson if you're. <laughs> have family or having babies could happen anytime after Mm -hmm. a certain point that's right and then obviously we're joined by cole and cranjus and cranjus uh cole has been holding down the fort uh i have to express my appreciation for cole him being able to step in it's been a lot of fun david yeah he's had some good laughs i am ringo Ringo. he's He's all right uh, David, uh, David, we decided David was, yeah, you're John Lennon, David, because you're so optimistic. <laughs> and then I'm the one that likes I, to hey. think I'm John Lennon, but I'm actually Paul McCartney, which <laughs> Abby's George Harrison for no reason, just because yeah. there's no other options. Left I, I will say I did. That's the part of the episode that I, I did listen to. I started listening to the first one that you guys did together. And I, I do appreciate being called <laughs> an optimist um, <laughs> because it's almost to a fault. Like I will, I will almost not see reality, just to hold on to just a Snap sliver back of hope. from reality. No, nope, mm. we're not going down that rabbit hole. Oh, well, oh, I mean, we, we are, we are going down the that Midwest. road. That's why it says hope. Yeah, sorry, we are going down that avenue because I mean, from the from the very first chapter of what we're doing. So we're covering chapters nineteen through twenty four, um, and probably some of my favorite chapters in this entire book uh, Hype man, train. just so so much stuff going on uh the some episodes were or episodes some chapters were you know they weren't super up but i mean there was a couple of them that were like this is bananas and this is awesome well, compared to the last section this is much more interesting right yeah because so, you get you get the first task right um which is just awesome and then mm-hmm. ron comes back and then yep. you'll task which is just shenanigans but if you're a harry potter fan you're here for the shenanigans mm-hmm. and the character development and just ron and hermione fighting i mean it's a yeah. key part of harry potter so yeah i live for it <laughs> yeah absolutely so we're just going to go ahead and dive into chapter 19 the hungarian horn tail as spencer loses his tea cozy <laughs> Because it's time to get um, serious, David. That's right. Uh, and again, so I guess I, I'll put I away like, my pipe too. Yeah, put away your pipe. This is this is not an episode. I don't know. There's some podcasts that like they like they do the entire episode just high, and we're not that show yet. Oh, it's a corn cob pipe, and it's not real. <laughs> no, you'll just just uh, just slow us down to one point or point five speed, and then apparently every podcast sounds high. Mm, if you're a twelve year old, it's a really funny joke. <laughs> interesting interesting but like i said i feel like the majority of of chapter 19 it, it it's it's really focused on the now broken friendship of harry and ron uh because you really get to just kind and of all of hogwarts <laughs> well no one cares about all of hogwarts we only care about harry and ron 
Uh, and that's all that Harry cares about because he's just like, man, I can deal with all of that if Ron's with me. And Hermione's not able to fill that role as much as she tries to and as much as Harry may want her to. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just we spend a lot of time with this. And again, this is this is a little bit to where this brings me back to like 2020 David, where I was just all pissed off at Ron. Um because of just this section, because he's he's a turd. He's cause again, this is where I have my biggest beef with him in the entire series. Um, and and I'm on Harry's side in terms of him not apologizing and not asking for Ron to be back in his corner. Um, uh, because like Ron above everybody else should know that Harry's not trying to seek the attention that comes with being a tri wizard champion. But his pride got in the way. His jealousy got in the way. And it was just really, just a really bad time for Ron. But what we see literally in the next chapter, Ron fixes it almost immediately with just the way that he, and then the he way that flipped, that comes back But then together. he flips the same behavior on Hermione. Yeah. So Ron's just kind true. of a mess in this book. He's a mess in this book, a little bit. What I like about it, though, is... And the movies did this. The movies don't do everything perfectly, but they did this perfectly. They did. In this one, everybody's crazy. <laughs> I blame the Harry, hair. And Harry's stressed. I blame the hair. Especially the hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> Goblet of Fire is the fever dream of the Harry Potter movie franchise. And yeah. then Order of the Phoenix, Harry's insane, but everyone else is okay. And then again, Half-Blood Prince, everyone's crazy again, but Harry's actually okay which is why I like Half-Blood Prince, because this one, he's just stressed all the time. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, but Ron is like, he goes, he goes the fierceness like he is to Harry, but on everybody else, because no one believes Harry, nor yeah. the Phoenix. Just a little foreshadowing for you. Yeah, yeah. But, but to yeah. me, that was one of my, one of my huge things about this chapter. And as much as like, I'm upset with Ron, it's, it's one of my favorite things to kind of read because in this side, we get Harry's perspective of this kind of conflict of, of, of him and, and Ron not getting along um, him feeling betrayed. But he also wants him there. But he's like, I shouldn't have to ask for him to come. Back. He needs to come and apologize to me. And but just to even see the di- like him struggling with even like like all his classes are not fun anymore because Ron's not there. Like divination is just trash because, because him and Ron are are on this, aren't there, you know, together going through these things. But I think for me, what what it continues to be the growing storyline for me, I'm going to use the word storyline a lot in this episode is Rita Skeeter, man. Hey, man, the worst. She is the worst. And it can, and again, doesn't help Harry out in this situation uh, with taking everything out of context, uh, man, pulling a skip Bayless and just quoting everything wrong. Mm-hmm. It's And if you don't get that reference, it's OK. We don't have to. Um, but it's also it's still fun for me, especially because I know what's going to come later on, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing about reading, rereading these books is that you get to know all of this stuff. But what what and but those are just the things for me that kind of stuck out in this chapter. But what about you guys? What what stood out to you? Cole, is there anything you would like to mention? Let me um open up my book here. I got a little I got I got something I wanted to mention. Uh a great little scene. Well, Harry's so and rightfully so, so ashamed. Or just so bullied and so sick of it that mm-hmm. he goes to goes to Hogsmeade in his invisibility cloak. Yeah. And I like that Moody can see Harry. Um, Moody and Hagrid. Well, Hagrid can't actually see him. But they go over there and he pretends to look at the spew notebook and he goes, nice cloak, Potter. Nice cloak, Potter. <laughs> yeah, it can see through everything, including this, invisibility cloaks. This is one of... Uh, chapter 21 is one of my favorite chapters because... Mm, yeah. um, we get to go to the kitchens. Although I don't like spew, I do enjoy the kitchen scene. 
Uh, we are in chapter 19, Cole, but that's okay. 19. My bad. Wow. Well, what I was going to say is I wanted to ask if you guys think is Harry completely right? Because I would say no, but mm, explain that. And is it, like you said, Harry's like Ron needs to come and apologize. I shouldn't have to ask him. Like, was Harry right in, in that? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Because, well, Harry literally had a good opportunity without asking for it to just loop Ron in, especially given it being a matter of serious, uh, the person <laughs> like that at the very end I, of the chapter. It's oh, just, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, it doesn't matter. Um, Harry was mean. It doesn't matter. To, it doesn't matter. Still too mean, though. Like he he threw it at the back of Ron's head. <laughs> yeah, which I applaud him for. I think that's great. Um because again, it goes back to the whole thing, like, and this is why I said, like, the kind of Hogwarts stuff, like Hogwarts being against him. This is the first time that Hogwarts has been against him. Like, they all thought that he opened the Chamber of Secrets, right? The difference is, is that this time Ron was included with Hogwarts about this, and he's supposed to be his best friend. And so, it, him throwing, like, uh, I just a, love a my Harry boy Ron, sucks things. and I can understand that this is like kind of a last, not a, not the last straw, I guess, because they get back together. Yeah. But um, it's a last straw because he's been following in Harry's footsteps this whole time, and Ron is just daydreaming about being in the Triwizard Tournament, and he learns mm -hmm. that he can't. And then Harry tells him, "Hey, I'm not going in either." So he's like, "Well, mm -hmm. at least Harry and I are together in this." And then Harry gets chosen it's chosen yes sure and, so and i'm I saying under, there's under, they're both 14 year olds they're very mean at right, each other right Ron I, I probably should have made up weeks before this yeah but i i think that to the magnitude of what ron did to harry for harry the for him the only thing to do was to throw a harry sucks thing or go cedric whatever it was at the back of his head I mean, honestly, Ron deserved <laughs> probably more than that. Yes. It's one of my favorite Harry Potter staples, though, where they make a reference at the beginning of a chapter <laughs> and then they bring it back yeah. at the end of the chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, it, what is it? At the beginning of the chapter, they're messing with it and they just get it, instead of fixing it, they get it to just stick on Potter Stinks instead yeah. of just switching between support secretary and then at the end of the chapter it's potter really st <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, um man. but colin and dennis are smarter than they kind of lead on they catch i don't remember what it was but they um they catch on to something pretty quickly i don't remember what it was Maybe it was earlier in the book. They they noticed the ship. Oh yeah, that's right. Before yeah, yeah. Else. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But I and I would say, yeah, I would say that final that finest final like serious scene. It, it, there was only a couple mm -hmm. more details in the book than in the film. I think the film did a pretty good job of it. But again, yeah, anytime that did. anytime that serious shows back up in any form, even even when he's writing a letter. Like, I'm just like, I just, I love, I love this character so much. And I can't, I, he's just awesome. I just, but this is kind of the last we him. see of Sirius for the entire movie. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because it sad. And we do get to see him in person. Mm -hmm. um, but like these three pages or whatever are actually getting to the true core of this. Yeah. Uh, which is actually, I don't think Goblet of Fire can be called my favorite, but I really enjoy that mm -hmm. it's very different from all the other books because mm -hmm. it has this gigantic Triwizard Tournament just in your face, just hiding what's really going on and you're having yeah. to read between lines all the time. And so then these whole pages about, hey, this is happening, this is happening. Yeah. The yeah, the whole, yeah. The, and, and to me, I just like, ah, oh, man, I wish we, I, we could see serious when he was he didn't have to hide when he was free when he was able to do stuff because like Sirius was the one who was connecting all of these dots and he's like not even in the thick of it like he he's he's in the shadows and he's mm -hmm. still figuring all this stuff out and for me 
like reading about this, man, I'm just like, it, it makes me wish for more like serious black of, of being able to follow his story and his journey because I, he's a fantastic character. Super just, intelligent. Yes. Give us Marauders. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. It's absolutely it's, agree. It's right I there. Mean, it is the easiest money making opportunity they have. Everybody will eat it up. Doing mm-hmm. it. People would eat it up. Um, catch Tom, cast Tom Holland as one of them. Doesn't oh, matter. No. It, doesn't even... it will make money. <laughs> <laughs> cast oh, timothy no. chalamet is another one <laughs> he'd have to be snape tom who, holland. who tom holland snape? would have to be snape or you no timothy chalamet yeah no he could be anyone after dune i think he could play anybody and it has to be a wes anderson the other thing the, um, that we start seeing <laughs> we start seeing a little bit <laughs> get out of here cole wes anderson could make it on budget that's for sure that is mm, true yeah He'd be like, I'll just get Edward Norton to play everyone for <laughs> Bill Murray as Dumbledore. No, oh, no, stop. I'm All right, done. I'll stop there. I'm done. No, <laughs> not great. Um, what was I going to say? Gosh, dang it, Cole. Sorry. Distracted me. It's okay. <laughs> the other thing is Ludo Bagman and Fred and George. We don't know what's going on. Yeah. But there's something there, and it's just another piece of the storyline yeah. that I like. Yeah, for That's sure. really all I had to say. Mm-hmm. It's pretty obvious that Karkaroff is not the true bad guy reading it in hindsight because yeah, he sold the Death Eaters out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, he's and a, also he's a turd. He's yeah, just he's, not, a turd. he's not the ultimate yeah. bad guy. But he's almost like he's like that 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 stupid turd that like sorry, I shouldn't say that. but he's just he's just that that he's a turd. He he's a, he's a stupid baddie who is. Like he's just blatantly just bad, like, and we're gonna see that after, like, in the first task, which is what we're heading into now, chapter twenty, um, with the way that he judges things. But I, mm-hmm. I would like, to, I think this chapter is pretty much, pretty much the same as the film in most areas, other than like the initial scene with Harry and Hermione trying to figure out how Harry should deal with the dragons. We get to see Mad Eye Moody helping Harry figure out, you know, how to use his flying skills to kind of get past the dragon. We get to experience Harry and Hermione actually practice Accio. We're not just shown it. And one of the things that I do love about reading it instead of seeing the film is that we actually get to hear about the results of the other champions, like, like Cedric and Fleury both getting, you know, charred by flames. We And also Ron talks about everything. Ron talks about everything. Yes. Which is great. Uh, Crumbs, you know, having, his dragon like step on some of her real eggs and all that kind of stuff um but again and and i'll probably hold off we won't talk about it yet but before we get into my favorite part which is obviously ron and harry what are some things that you guys enjoyed about this chapter um you know this is like the first task this is where we really get into the thick of like oh uh, and it obviously has a big impact on the rest of the book, especially with Ron, but this is like, oh, this is not, not only did Harry not sign up for this, but this really (laughs) isn't what he signed up for. (laughs) Yeah. This isn't what he signed up for in his fourth year. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, Facing a dragon. Um, And this is the first time. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's not the first time we've seen a dragon in this uh, series. Mm -hmm. Um, Norbert. But, no, but it's kind of the first time we see a Norberta, real dragon. Actually, it's time. Yeah, it's the time we really see a real dragon, especially the Hungarian horn tail. Yeah. Um, I have an opinion. I'm gonna say it. Do it. Okay. All the character development and all the other pieces we just mentioned aside, just the first task itself, just Harry versus the horn tail, the movie killed it. The movie killed it because the movie did it better. The movie did it better. <laughs> Flying around. Did they expand it? They did they do way too much? Yes, but it was better. I agree with just Spencer the Alice, action sequence. Nothing else. Just just pulling out once Harry walks into the arena to when Harry grabs the egg. 
And not when he's holding, not that it immediately cuts all the scoring and he's just holding the egg in the Gryffindor house because I'm not counting that. I'm just counting that scene itself. Sorry, David, I'm with him on this one. I mean, that's fine. You both can be wrong. I think <laughs> I, I I don't know. Like, I get what you're saying. Like, it, like viewing it like entertainment wise, it's it's better. Um, I mean, there's just more going on in the film version than in the book version. I just think and I know you said everything else aside, but I, I just can't separate it. I I just love how quick it was, how fast it was. Um, I mean, because here you have this fourth year looking like he's completely outmatched. He's completely way over his head and he's the one who does it the quickest and the fastest. And, and for the, in most cases unscathed compared to, you know, the, the others. And for me, that was kind of a refreshing thing. Cause I was actually thinking about it. I was thinking about this earlier today when I was typing up the outline and I was just like, man, did the movie do it better? I was like, no, there's no way that it did it better. Cause I enjoy, I enjoyed reading it more. Um, it then I think I it was just so it was so stupid in the film. Um, just like him coming no. back over the thing and Hermione going like, yes, yes, like so <laughs> stupid. Um, but the friend George go, well done, dragon. Okay, okay, but that's not enough to like make it like everything else was just so dumb about. I'm just saying like, if you put it all the know. background, like in a reboot, if they, which they are planning on doing. If they don't, if he doesn't leave the arena, I'm gonna be a little sad. <laughs> no, it, him leaving the arena was stupid. I, I, it was to me, it was overkill. It was, it wasn't good. Like him, like coming back over the horizon and him be like, like on the bridge, <laughs> so stupid. It was so dumb. No, the yeah, I know. I just convinced myself even more. Yeah, the book is better. <laughs> the the film version was so stupid. I hated it. I actually hate it. Um, <laughs> Cole yeah, and I are together, so I'll take it. Hey, comment, comment below, comment on our YouTube. Which, comment, which one you prefer? Uh, message in Jennifer, on Jade, get in that. Jennifer, get in on this, guys. Help me out. I need Abby, your support. Abby, we need your. I need your support as well. Come on, someone to help me out. What if we out. compromise? What if we compromise? No, no, no. I tried on, to compromise already. Hold on. No, no. What if he had yeah, done the um the um the trick on it that. Um, the wonky faint. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, the wonky faint. <laughs> the wonky faint. The runt faint. <laughs> I mean, compromise. He leaves the arena, but it also is an overkill. Destroys the bridge. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> uh, I think, I do think that the movie Horn Tail doesn't quite look right. Like, I think the books is better described. We're not going to go have into to how see... the horn tail looks. Cole, what are you looking at? I'm <laughs> sorry. I, went, I looked the wrong way too. I would look this way. I'm supposed to look this way, but uh, sorry. Context. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I mean... Getting back to the point of yeah, this, get back I do to... <laughs> love, and the movie did it okay, but the book did great. Where Ron's like, nope, back on Team Harry again. I, 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 I again. This probably. Spencer will disagree. I prefer the book one also, like overwhelmingly over how the mo- how the film did. Oh no, it. I agree. Um, I think I think that it was just it was wonderful. Every every single part of it, every like the the way that Ron just came back on Team Harry was just like no, I'm sorry. It looked like, great because he immediately went with Hermione yes. into the tent. The yes. shock of the moment brought him back. Mm-hmm. What I personally love though is is Harry going forget it like it's okay and that's that was sweet right that was a sweet it, it was because and then Hermione going you two yeah. are so stupid <laughs> yeah yeah it, but I I like I like the fact that Harry was cold at first and then immediately before Ron responded he was just like 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 you said like forget about it it's 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 okay like like it was just it was perfect it was it was beautiful i loved it um i loved how he i feel like he almost felt like he had to make up for all of that lost time like immediately and that was just it was it was amazing to see because i think in most cases like we we usually see people like when they're 
broken down in friendships, it takes a while for things to kind of really get back and mesh well together. But Harry even said it in his own words. He said, it was almost like we met for the first time all over again, Um, which was, it's kind of romantic in a sense, but, but it it just, it like automatic is like, it's as if none of that ever happened and everything just went back, went back to normal. And that was Jim Dale's performance as Ron. Yes. Yes. You're the best, you know. Okay. No competition. <laughs> it starts like I, running I know, through everything. I know I'm going to be off track with this. Um, but I have to ask the question to you. I guess Spencer and Cole. I don't know, Cole. If, have you listened to Stephen Fry? And his <laughs> so Cole, is, uh, Cole has listened to the classic YouTube audiobooks. Yes. Well, so who's, Which means who, people read just oh, randos so sorry, reading Cole. the book. It's I'm okay. So sorry. It I'll has you, its merits. I'll I've give you my it its merits. I'll give you my Hoopla account, and you can listen to because because okay. you you deserve yeah, a win. You should buddy. get Hoopla, Cole. You, yeah, you deserve a win. I'm a Google it right now. I got lucky, David. I uh, I got back on Hoopla just to see if I could get on hold, got it on hold again because I lost. Yeah, it at some point, it, it, and it was yeah. free, like open. Like I didn't have to wait, so That's I was awesome. really excited. Yeah. So this anyway, section, I got to listen to classic Jim Dale again. We're a big Jim Dale, yeah, cause, podcast. Because I, I think um, it's like part of the like Facebook group that we're a part of with like the Harry Potter mates. Podcasts. Yeah. Oh no, no, the mates. Oh thing. no, the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they did a poll of like Jim Dale or Stephen Fry, and I was shocked. Tell me, Stephen Fry didn't. He probably did win, he, didn't he? Well, when I when I voted, he was in the lead. But like, see, I'm a it, big I'm a big Stephen Fry fan. I'm I not, enjoy. Him. I'm I'm not. I I'm am. Like, I, I love. It's, I love Jim. Da- I it's 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 not that Stephen Fry is bad, but it's just Jim Dale's just so good. I think my opinion is that Stephen Fry is a better voice overall, but he is um, Jim Dale is has is better arranged like across the board, so. Jim Dale does better voices for each character, mm. whereas Stephen Fry has like a perfect Hagrid voice, a perfect Dumbledore voice, but then some of the other characters are a little mm. see, and and that's kind of where I and Jim will, Dale I will, doesn't miss. Yeah, like I will only I will only disagree with the Hagrid voice. I actually prefer Jim Dale's Hagrid over Stephen Fry's. That's fair because He's because per- there's only perfect. There's only one time when I listened to Stephen Fry where I was just like, man, that's a perfect like literally a perfect Hagrid but with Jim Dale it's more consistent across across the board. fair um but anyway, and, and, and seriously we're just that. rating them against Robbie Coltrane <laughs> yeah, that's so yes rest that's, in peace that's true uh, uh, but anyway but he's dead scene. Robbie Coltrane yeah I'm just kidding wow Cole <laughs> wow Cole, wow, Cole. Yeah, uh Ludo like... Bagman really needs Harry to win that's obvious. That's the only thing I wanted to mention. Oh, I'll, oh please keep mentioning. That's end of the chapter. Please. Rita asks Harry for a word, and he says, yeah, you can have a word. Goodbye. Mm. Mic drop. Mic drop. Fantastic. Great great way to end this chapter. Again, this was just a really fun chapter. Hey, just look at this. It's the yeah. house of liberation, friend. Yeah, Spencer, this is your chapter. Hey, Here we're we at go. the right chapter now. Cole's at the right chapter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just going to let you guys just take it away with your favorite parts of, of this. I mean, we focus pretty much the in, the entire chapter on, on this part. We're in the kitchens pretty much the entire time. So what did you guys love about, about chapter 21? You just tickle the pear and you get in the kitchen. It's that simple. And nobody talks about it. Like... If you want food, just go down there and get it. Just tickle the pear. I love it. They're also right next to the Hufflepuff house the whole time. Exactly. And that let's Which face it, they're going to be the hungriest. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm skipping all the bad parts. Rita Skeeter and the <laughs> yeah. blasted scroots. Yeah. The blasted scroots. Goodness gracious. We should mention though when Ron and Harry are friends again in uh, divination class. Yeah, <laughs> Do you get all my dudes. 
it'd be a bit more impressive if she hadn't done it about 80 times before. I know, for real. And then he said, if I dropped dead every time she told me to, I'd be a medical miracle. You'd be some sort of extra concentrated ghost, said Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Which bloody Baron passed by right when he said that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow, I mean, it's fun. OK, I I really people talk about this like Dobby shouldn't have been like it's a, it's OK that he wasn't in the movie. But I really appreciated that Dobby makes a reappearance and is able to fill in some gaps. Wait, people said that it was OK that he wasn't in it. Yeah, people don't. Some people say they really wanted him in it. But some people said say he doesn't he didn't play that much of a role, especially because he's not the. Because I don't know. I strongly I'm, disagree. Cole and I talked about this on the last episode. I but... mean, I'm fine with it. The only because they didn't include the house elf liberation movement or spew or whatever the heck we want to the call unsuccessful it. House elf liberation. And then <laughs> they just replaced him with Neville. Which uh, I, I about. countered that it kind of made more sense. That it story, was Neville. That it was Neville because I agree. I agree with that because mm -hmm. Moody gave Neville the book. Yeah. Um, and it grows upon Neville's character as to where he goes after Hogwarts. And Neville actually has something to do. Yeah. I. I. It's not Neville. so much this scene that I guess I wanted him in, and it, and I guess it makes sense for him not to be in, especially in the direction in which the movie went for him not to be in it, but. I think the the scene that he's in in the Yule Ball chapter, I think does play a role yes. in his in his development because again, it, it, it for me it makes what happens in the Deathly Hallows even that much more like incredible. Like, and I think I think this uh, this House of Liberation front chapter is very crucial to the story, so. Neville giving Harry the Gillyweed is fine, mm -hmm. but cutting this is very significant to the story, which so it made the move. It made the movie take a pretty hard different direction. Yeah, because it doesn't. It's not just this, but it doesn't include Ludo Bagman, mm -hmm. which this Winky calls him, out. him. Yes, calls him out in this chapter. She's also crying. Person. Winky's also more. Uh, yeah, shout out to Jim Dale again. <laughs> Winky. Uh, just like Winky's not just sad about Barty Crouch Sr. She's sad because she lost Barty Crouch Jr. He got away. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. It's not a spoiler. We've all read this book. <laughs> but what if, what if a listener, one of our millions of listeners... It actually, you probably would have... This book's been out for like what? Forever. Yeah, 23 forever. years? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I I appreciate I appreciate the fact that Dobby and Winky are just polar opposites and how they handle the their freedom. Yes, because like Dobby's like in in the words of Joel Olstein is living his best life now. And <laughs> Winky is not like she's struggling hardcore. Um for the reasons that you mentioned and while Dobby is able to drop shade on the Malfoys just easily just like oh yeah they're dark wizards like Winky has issues with with doing that with Mr. Crouch but not like you like you mentioned with Bagman like uh yeah Winky's continues. Winky's totally a hypocrite there but uh Dumbledore I freaking love Dumbledore for this like this makes me love Dumbledore even more. The fact that he got Dob Winky, they brought Winky. The fact in. that he hired Winky and Dobby, yeah, and he's paying. He offered to pay Dobby ten galleons a week, which is insane for a house elf. Um, and he and Dobby's like, I talked him down. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby, no. And then uh, I want Dobby to have money. <laughs> oh, where is it? He said that he could. He said that they were free to call him a barmy old codger if they want to. <laughs> it was this and then um, in the previous chapter when Moody's talking about how cheating is always a part of the Triwizard Tournament. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, Dumbledore can, I've talked to Dumbledore about this. He can stay on his high horse all he wants because Dumbledore is not helping his champions. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But the other one, the other. Uh, oh, that, yeah, they are. They're desperate to beat Dumbledore yeah. because they think he's uh, invincible. Mm-hmm. It's the go. I think is I think is the word that he's they're like they got they're trying to prove Dumbledore's not the greatest of all time, but he clearly is. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. Clearly is. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to say. Um mm-hmm. it's a good chapter. Oh it's a great chapter. Maybe my favorite ending line of a chapter in this entire book. Percy wouldn't recognize yes. him if he danced naked in front of him wearing Dobby's tea cozy. It's Ten. probably Ron's best joke ever. Oh. He has the best comedic timing. I There's think a, he he's, has some oh, really man. good. He has although, some really good ones. David, you had probably haven't heard this yet, but in the last episode, he was uh, they were talking about planets and divination, or maybe yeah. it was this chapter. Um, it was a recent chapter before Ron hated Harry. And um, they're like, "What, Professor Trelawney? What planet is this?" And she oh goes, yeah, it's Uranus, like, oh, yeah, Uranus, my dear. Like, and Ron says, lavender. "Can I have a look at Uranus, <laughs> Lavender? <laughs> the forest, Adam." <Adelaide. laughs> this was this was the scene that made Did she know. Yeah, it it made it made she must not be named. Pick it and say, "Yeah, we're doing it. I'm doing yeah. this. Half blood prints. Here we go." Um. But yeah, anyway, let's move on. Chapter 22, The Unexpected you Task. The Yule Ball is approaching. <laughs> yeah, so they, they obviously find out that the Yule Ball is coming. Harry finds out that he and his date with the other champions have to basically begin the Yule Ball with a dance. Some great McGonagall time yes. in this chapter. I was uh, um... she's like freaking out about people letting their hair down. <laughs> As I was listening to this today, um, I was in on public, YouTube Goodness on gracious. YouTube um, oh, that on makes YouTube. Me sad for you. Makes and me sad. I don't know. The McGonagall voice was pretty, pretty funny. And I laughed, um, but I was in a public place. I was um, in the middle of uh, a mall. Don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. And so I just started. It's funny. Laughing. It's funny. It's funny. It's right. Funny. And then all you have to do is if they look at you, you just be like, what? I'm listening to Harry Potter. <laughs> Get off your love, high horse. Get off your high going. horse. I don't dance. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Oh, boy. If Harry had just asked Cho right away, mm. I mean, he's 14. He'd never do that. But mm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Cran, Cran just, just knocked over a picture of himself. This is awkward. He's like, I'm tired of looking at myself. I have a fun question. Oh, okay. What? Okay. So the Weird Sisters, what uh, what real life band would they most equate with? Oh, I I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't decide <laughs> if they're like like rock, like they're like Wizard U two, or are they like more on the like the cold? They're like Wizard Coldplay. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm probably not the person to ask for this because I'm what I was thinking of. It's probably not even close. I was thinking more of Queen. Oh, that's probably fair, actually. Yeah, let's stick with that. <laughs> and also, <laughs> for, for anyone that listens to our podcast that doesn't like our podcast name, first of all, there's the door. But second I, I, of all, wait, at hold least, on. Wait. No one's told me that. No one okay. said that. I'm just saying, calm Man. down. Okay. Thank you. At least we're not like the fifth Harry Potter podcast to be called the Weird Sisters. <laughs> yes. And I don't think they're actually women. Pretty sure the Weird Sisters is a male group. Right. Or mixed. Anyway, yeah. just Honestly, calling out some other ones, just a little bit. You know, I, you know, I, I feel if like another one's already that. called that. Maybe don't pick that name. Uh, listen, I think our our podcast name, it's solid. I mean, it's good, and I'm surprised it was yeah, not taken. And like that, no one took it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I, I here's what I wrote down for like my summary of it. I said, I said, 
you know, everything plays out the way you expect with Harry being unable to ask Joe, Ron being insensitive to Hermione, and <laughs> I put I put in quotation, I said, thus playing into the Harry Hermione romance. Get so, out. <laughs> And no, then, sir. and then I said, and then the Patil twins agreeing to go with Harry and Ron to the ball, which is okay. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big, big Hermione. Sorry, I almost said Hermione Ginny Stan. That would be bad. Hermione. I'm a big Harry. I'm a big Harry Ginny shipper. And there I, was, I, I, I'm, with I'm with you. Almost none of that in this book. Yeah, uh, well, almost none of that in this book. This one little moment. Yeah, that yeah. Jenny yeah. didn't like that uh, mm-hmm. when he mentioned Joe. Also, yeah. well, uh, didn't, she, didn't she that the movie did that? Also, she like didn't she cry because because I think she just uh, hit her face a little bit. But uh, yeah, I no, I'm just it, saying but... because of like when when it when Ron, I think it was Ron said, Jenny, why don't you go with Harry? And she's upset because she already said yes to somebody and. She got sad. Yeah. Because, yeah. But she's not like, she's a, she's not like the little crying girl. We no, saw no, no, no. Not the little crying girl, but yeah, I, I think that plays into what you're talking about, about Harry and Jenny romance that but before if we you don't there, love it. I'm going to figure out what it actually was. But before we get there, I just want to note, I think the book does it just slightly better, but they're both great. Okay. When Ron goes, Fred, who are you going with? Angelina. <laughs> what? You've already asked her? Good point. I, I, <laughs> <Oi>, Angelina, <laughs> want to go to the ball with me? All right then. <laughs> mm, I'm all. Yeah, I would only. Oh my gosh! I just realized which one. I am the worst Harry Potter fan. Which one dies? Fred. Is it Fred? Yeah, Fred. Because Angelina marries George. Oh. Rip. This is the awkward part in the podcast. <laughs> um, the amount of times awful. I've Googled which twin died in Harry Potter is embarrassing. Yeah. I, oh man, that is, that's rough. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think of that as a mean thing. I think it's more, it's not that she's looking for someone like Fred. It's probably both in both their friends. She wasn't like going out with Fred. That was pretty obvious. I feel like, yeah, they're just really, really close friends. Um, yeah. yeah. Says George Leasley's spouse is Angelina Johnson. But I feel like it was more like in they they just kept up with each other because they were all friends, and that's mm-hmm. routed into something which is beautiful. But that is wild. I did not think about, I didn't even think about that until this very moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh man, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah this this chapter was just it was good. It was good. Uh, I kind of how you think things would play out. It's chapter twenty three, the Yule Ball, to where our things start going kind of crazy pretty crazy a things bit. start going sideways in the most colossal way i will say Deadpool. one of my favorite scenes to start was uh dobby giving harry homemade socks christmas for christmas socks. this is the scene why that... does harry hate beautiful right? socks i don't know i have seen a lot of like harry potter costume things and these socks are so common like this mate of socks and it's such a specific reference yeah yeah i, I don't know i shame loved on it. harry for being a picky 14 year old i and yeah. not wanting socks for christmas Ooh, mm-hmm. it's like nobody can relate to that one Honestly, <laughs> i lo- i would love to get socks for christmas yep i'm at that point in my life as a, not as a fourteen year old, though, exactly. Not as a fourteen year old, as a I fourteen got, year old, absolutely I got not. Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic on Xbox for my fourteenth Christmas. It was great. It was fantastic. I loved it. Um, but really, in this chapter, what we get to see is just we get to see a jealous Ron, which points for Hermione and Ron's romance. Spencer, I'm, I'm giving you 
giving it to they're you. always they're always going at it they're always that's going why they're, at it. that's why they're destined to be together i agree uh and then we see you know percy he he steps in makes an appearance for mr crouch say, they, they go a little too far this time though hermione yeah. and ron do they do yes this, they do. this is one of my one of like ron this, takes it too far let me let me read uh, from this that. chapter is like a core memory for, for me for uh, reading these books for the first time there's not a ton of stuff that sticks out from me reading these books for the first time in high school but the, the scene in this book where Victor Crumb is trying to pronounce Hermione's name it always I sometimes I think about it and it makes me giggle Hermione Hermione, Hermione. 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 Mm. it's like a Finding Nemo Hermione. I actually enjoyed the audiobook. It hurts my eyes to read. <laughs> yes, in it does. Floor mm-hmm. and Victor's accents, and so having Jim Dale just do it for me, it's perfect, and putting on a show for me, yeah, is, is fantastic. Great. Mm-hmm. Get down. <laughs> uh, Dumbledore. Dumbledore calls out Carker off real quick. A really good moment yeah and by calling him out ron uh, dumbledore just has a really he mentions the room of requirement he does mm-hmm. like he didn't already know yeah a seat a room full of toilets right of chamber pots <laughs> of chamber pots <laughs> what did he say possibly is only accessible at 5 30 in the morning or it may only appear at the quarter moon or when the seeker has an exceptionally full bladder <laughs> harry snorted to his plate of goulash Percy frowned, but Harry could have sworn Dumbledore had given him a very small wink. Mm. Dumbledore's the goat. He's the goat. There's a touch there's a great Dumbledore um quote in the next chapter. It's it's I think uh, yeah, it's in the or next chapter. Or maybe it's the next segment. I can't remember next section. I can't remember off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. This is a stupid fan theory, but People, a lot of people have a fan theory that Harry, that Dumbledore is not actually Dumbledore and he died and that Ron traveled back in time. That's you tell, yeah, Dumbledore. you said that in the fan theories episode, one of our first episodes the, we ever did. So many art, there's a few arguments for it. The, the one they never make is the fact that Dumbledore's humor is pretty similar to Ron's. It's kind of like if Ron is a, a very good one liners. And it's very like in tune, like in time, like he always has mm-hmm. quick. On it's the, the perfect one. It's always re- relevant to what's going on. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah, it's not a true sense. theory, but yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, but yeah, we get to see Hagrid mess things up with Madame Maxine by calling her a half giant, just like him, which <laughs> is a huge tale in the next chapter. But um, Have you seen the deleted scene with Snape and Karkaroff in the movie? Yes, yes man. It's great. it's great. It's it's not as good as the book, but it's great. Mm-hmm. It's really five great. points from Hufflepuff for then snogging. Flee. Just <laughs> snogging. Then flee, said Snape's voice curtly. Flee. I will make your excuses. I, however, am remaining at Hogwarts. Mm. Snape has his moments. I mean, he was absolutely the worst human being of all time in the last section of the book, but this is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great, this is a great part of it. Um, But then by the end of the night, at like, I'm trying to remember if this is after or before the blow up, Ron and Hermione finally have it out in the common room to end the night. Not a great note. Um, but then Harry decides, okay, I'm actually going to listen. Or Cedric advises Harry to listen to his eggs while taking a bath, specifically in the prefix bathroom. And so a crazy night at Hogwarts starts off with homemade socks and it ends. It ends talking about the Triwizard Tournament. Well, Ron just really dropped the ball here. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's not Hermione. Mm-hmm. This is Hermione's golden moment. And I think so too. It's a really good moment for her. And Ron is like, hey, Hermione, you're a girl. You're a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Hermione. We knew you were a girl. Now will you go with me? Yeah. Uh but and and Victor Krem isn't so bad. 
No, talk about he, a power. Talk about a power move. A Durmstrang student taking a Muggleborn. Mm-hmm. Cargroff wasn't happy about that. I was gonna say it would have been cool to see him a little more, but I can see why he just want to stay out of the war entirely. Mm-hmm. In later, yeah. chap- in later books. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, chapter twenty-four, Rita Skeeter's scoop. Um, for me. This was this is a great chapter in my opinion because it starts one of the greatest storylines of all time. Uh, but we'll get that we'll get there in a second. But what we see is obviously Rita's article kind of destroys Hagrid um, for a little bit um, because it is revealed that he is a half giant to a very prejudiced wizarding world. Um, so he's not in class. He's replaced by the former professor Grubbly Plank, um, but. Hermione's thoughts on this whole thing, I think, should be everybody's thoughts. It doesn't really matter. Um, we all know Hagrid, and we've seen his story in the last three books previously. He's just a, an amazing character. Um, and I, I love I love that Rita is the focus of this chapter because for me, or Spencer, you go first. You look like you have something you want to say. This is mean to say because I love Hagrid. He's <laughs> he is my favorite father figure of Harry. Very important, very beloved character. Mm-hmm. Grubbly Plank is a better professor than Hagrid. No, oh, for sure, Absolutely <laughs> great. Very in every way. Mm-hmm. I don't like this because I don't like my boy Hagrid being taken through the sewer, um, through yeah, the wreck. I, I agree. And then the worst of all, my probably my least favorite character in this book malfoy is the one to go hey to beg it to you potter (laughs) (laughs) yeah but it is yeah i mean it it shouldn't affect how people think about him and it's just another case with spew of how uh wizards being not racist in the traditional way, but uh, mm-hmm. racist against other races um, mm-hmm. in the magic sense, like goblins, yeah. house elves, giants. Centaurs. That's the next book, but yes, yeah. <laughs> very much so. Uh, man, Umbridge is horrible. Yeah, she's awful. And um, they, I mean, half breeds in general, but Hagrid's not mm-hmm. really a half breed. I guess he technically is, but not in the same yeah, way centaurs are. No. Not in the way centaurs are, though. No, no, no. no. Uh, I, yeah. So, obviously, we get L- Ludo Bagman back into the um, story. And we um, see a little bit of his feud with the goblins. Mm-hmm. A little bit of foreshadowing. Yeah. Um, But for me, right here, we see the start of the showdown of the century. Hermione v. Rita Skeeter. <laughs> One of my favorite storylines in the entire book. Um, Where did Rita write about her? Was it Hermione like hanging out with Victor Crumb or cheating on Harry? or Yeah, cheating on Harry with that Victor Crumb. That, yeah. yeah. that was her angle. That was her angle for sure. But to <laughs> me, it, it like them going back at each other no, and it's again knowing how it ends. Like, to me, I was like, "Oh man, this is like, this is one of my favorite stories." Cole, you know what this reminds me out. of? What? Here, David, uh, you haven't played Spider-Man PS4, have you? Mm-hmm. You have? Yeah. Like all the way through. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, there's one of the backpacks that he finds <laughs> where um, he finds a vial, and he's like. Not sure letting opening this up will set the Sandman free. Best not risk it. <laughs> and the game makers recently revealed that that is true. Sandman is trapped in that. <laughs> I totally missed that. But like, that's like this on steroids because mm-hmm. uh, Rita's locked in there for a while. Let's be real. Yeah. But mm-hmm. in that jar. But Sandman's in that jar for like six years. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, didn't know that one. I'm excited for that to come back and to play at some point. Mm. Goodness, yeah. I hope it does. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it reminded me of. 
But yeah, knowing how it ends and knowing how it helps Harry in order the Phoenix with her mm-hmm. my, my knees helping hand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, now, thankfully, what we get to see at the end of this chapter, it's heading back in with Hagrid and seeing Dumbledore and the trio going to comfort him and get him to start teaching again. Um, and it, it's then at this point that Harry then decides, you know, it's time for him to take up Cedric on his advice. Mm-hmm. I do want to mention the egg. one thing from this chapter. Mm-hmm. And it just mostly because I think I've, I've said this a couple of times. I haven't read these books. I haven't reread these books since high school. So definitely not since we've seen Jude Law's Dumbledore. But um, when Dumbledore says, I have temporarily gone deaf and haven't any idea what you said, Harry, said Dumbledore, twiddling his thumbs and staring at the ceiling. That would be great for Jude Law if they brought him back for the reboot. Yes. And had him play Dumbledore for the reboot. That is something Jude Law would nail that perfectly. Again, it goes back to the it goes back to me saying like they could bring Fantastic Beasts back into this if they just kept it around and they could all be canon and it, oh man, whatever. But we were talking were we talking about Jared Harris last week? We were talking about Jared Harris as Dumbledore. He he do it pretty be, good too. If you had he'd to do that scene pretty new. good too. Mm. But Jared Harris could play anybody. He'd be a perfect he could play Harry. Man, I, well, yes. He'd be a good new Mad Eye Moody. I, I to me, the, he has more Mad Eye Moody vibe energy. Yeah, but I, yeah, I want I want Jude Law a hundred percent. I want Jude Law. David, you don't have to answer this right now, but I, I would can. love a suggestion for Ludo Bagman. Okay, hit me. No, I, I want you to give me one. Oh, you want me to Cole come and up I with decided one? on Owen Wilson. <laughs> Why? Because he's sandy blonde hair. Why? <laughs> and he could be in a fat suit. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't want a joke. No, it's more of a joke want, answer. I don't want we this need someone. Be, we need someone this to be good. The, the episode. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I do have one though, off the top of my head. Um, it, I don't think it could work. And I'm going to show you why I don't do fan casting with you guys ever because, <laughs> because I don't think I could do a good job. Like, this, that's just not me bagging no, y'all. This, this is me giving y'all props. I, I'm fan Jim casting Gaffigan. this reboot would be an impossible task, and I would oh, never do it. I, never. I, I, I'm, I'm saying Jim Gaffigan as Ludo Bagman. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the worst. Eng- he's got all, he's got all, the wor- all of his yeah, accents oh, are bad, yeah. they're but- all bad. But Did I you guys see the new Peter Pan wise, movie? Could be per- Is he in that? <laughs> yes, he's me. I haven't, oh, I haven't seen I it yet. That. I haven't seen oh, it yet. God. Not yet. Now I, I, I've heard bad I'm things actually, about it. Maybe from you. I don't know. It was not great. Not oh, good man, at that's all. sad because I want to watch it specifically because of Jude Law. I, Jude right Law now, was really good. Yeah, right now I'm Alicia and I were re-watching Indiana Jones. Uh, we're going to go see the new one on Tuesday. Um so we're but we're rewatching Buckle them all in. before. So we just finished Temple of Doom like a couple hours ago. Yeah, I it was awful. I hated it. How it's dare so, you? It was bad. It was bad. The worst one. Kingdom of the Crystal School is better. It is. I, I think you'll agree that I don't know where you sit on the number one, number two, but I think you're gonna agree that Dial of Destiny is a hard third place. See, that's what I've seen. I've seen a lot of people put that on their list. So I'm interested to see because Right, I need because I, I think we're gonna watch Last Crusade tonight. I think uh, that's my favorite. It's my uh, favorite because I, I liked I liked Raiders of the Lost Ark. I think that's really really good. But I I thought that I liked the Last Crusade better. But I'm not 100. percent I'll let you, I'll I'll let the group know after we watch it. <laughs> but I think I think I really liked the Last Crusade. But Temple of Dune was awful. It was terrible. It's bad. Just bad. But anyway, that's going to do it for us here on the show of Requirement, talking through chapters 19 through 24 of the Goblet of Fire. Um, 
what's next, what's to come. Uh, we're going to continue reviewing this book. Whether the second Spencer, task is coming up. Yeah, it yep. is coming up. Spencer, is I, the movie I, better? I'll say next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, also comment if you thought that the first task was better either in the book <laughs> or in the film. If you're smart, you'll go with me. If you're not... <laughs> It, you'll 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 choose the more uh entertaining but crazy i guess part of it either way if the bridge uh, doesn't break oh my gosh <laughs> viewers viewers no guarantees no guarantees viewers. listeners let know that i love you and if my baby doesn't come i will be here to help finish this wild yeah. ride that yeah. is the goblet of fire yeah. viewers this is the last thing i'll leave you with Like <laughs> a broomstick in the film. Anyway, for Cole and Spencer, this is David on the show requirement to Harry Potter podcast. And until next time, mischief managed.